We made it through summer, y'all. The leaves are swirling, the fire is lit, and the soup is on. In celebration of the most wonderful time of year, I'd love to show you four ways to make high protein soup and chili. These recipes are easy to make and a great way to hit your protein and veggie intake goals in one fell swoop. So slip into your favorite bulking season sweats, get cozy, and prepare to be inspired, chef. Let's start with my favorite recipe of the bunch, three pepper chili. My original recipe calls for 9 to 10 ground bison, but I have a ton of extra lean ground beef left over from my homemade ground meats video. So that's what I'm using here. We're just gonna brown that and fully cook it in a little bit of olive oil using a large Dutch oven or a soup pot. The recipe also calls for three chilies, hence the name, but all I had was poblano and some mini sweet peppers. Any pepper works here. I also threw in some sliced rainbow baby carrots that we'll use in the veggie ground beef soup here in a minute, two sweet onions, some frozen crushed garlic, two teaspoons of kosher salt. If you're using fresh garlic, leave it out in this step because you don't want to burn it. You can add it at the very end before you deglaze the pot and add everything else. You want to fully cook your ground beef and then transfer it to a bowl briefly while you add about another one and a half, two tablespoons of olive oil and add your veggies in. You'll cook these for about six to eight minutes, stirring frequently, keeping them moving around until they begin to soften. And by the way, if you want to hide the carrots, run them through a box grater or dice them really finely. They'll almost completely emulsify into your chili and you will never know they're there. I love the flavor and the added texture from them though. Once your veggies are softened, you can add in about a fourth cup of tomato paste. If you really want to give it a kick, you could use some crushed or smashed chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. Then you're going to deglaze with a 12 ounce beer. My original recipe calls for a dark beer. Here I'm using a non-alcoholic beer from Athletic Brewing. You want to add that and let it mostly cook off. And then you're going to add in a packet of chili seasoning. I used McCormick. Any packet works. And then a 28 ounce can of fire roasted crushed tomatoes. If you can't find fire roasted, regular crushed tomatoes work just fine. And then you're going to gradually add four cups of beef broth. I used beef bone broth because it was on sale, but you could totally use any broth or stock. You could use the chicken bone broth that we're gonna use in the dumpling soup at the end of this video. And just add everything together, stir it, add a couple of bay leaves, cover it, and let this simmer for the longer the better. Two, three hours, let all those flavors come together. The veggies will be completely tender, almost emulsified completely. And you'll see here, I'm taking half of the chili out for the chili purist, although I've probably already offended them with the carrots, but we've got a bean-free chili, at least for half, and then Vanessa, and me, if we're honest, really likes beans and chili, so I'm adding a can. No need to let it simmer for a lot longer, just let those beans kind of come up to temperature, and then I like to finish with some freshly chopped cilantro, and usually I'll add some like balsamic vinegar, red wine vinegar at the very end, but here I used a vinegar forward hot sauce like Tabasco. Uh, stir everything together and you're ready to serve. I like some baked Tostito scoops or tortilla chips. Baked pork rinds are great for crunch. A little fat-free Greek yogurt instead of sour cream, shredded cheese, hot sauce, or fresh peppers. This is good stuff. Next, we have a Tex-Mex spin on bean and bacon soup. This one starts out with eight slices of diced center cut bacon. Add it to a cold Dutch oven, turn it on medium heat, let the fat render, crisp up the bacon, and then transfer it to a plate lined with a paper towel. Set it aside. Then add two diced onions to that rendered bacon fat. Stir everything together, let that moisture release. Deglaze in the pot, let those onions soften, maybe five, six minutes or so. And then you're gonna add in a pound of extra lean ground chicken. This is more leftover chicken from my homemade ground meats video. We're really dipping into the stash here. You just wanna break that apart and fully cook. And while that finishes, you can prep all your other ingredients. You need four extra thin corn tortillas, diced pretty small. This acts as a thickener for the soup, which is really cool. I love the flavor of it, and it really does make this like a creamy soup without any extra cream. You also need a tablespoon each of ground cumin, coriander, and dried oregano, three cans of white kidney beans. Coming from a macro counting background, I never drain beans. Every macro counts, but if you want to drain and rinse these, no worries. You may need to add a bit more broth, but probably not. 
You also need a 16 ounce jar of salsa verde, three fourths of your cooked bacon, reserve the rest for a garnish. If you know you're gonna garnish with something else, totally cool to just throw it all in here. And then I use six cloves of frozen crushed garlic, and then we're adding in chicken broth. Here's a pro tip, if you pour it upside down, you don't get all the splattering and gushing out, but you gotta turn it at the very end. I learned that from the movie Beer Fest. What a classic. So everything is in, you just wanna bring this up to a simmer, cover, and let it ride for maybe an hour. This one won't take nearly as long as the chili. Those flavors will really develop pretty quickly, and it is gonna be better the next day, of course, but what soup and chili isn't. I like to serve this with tortilla chips or baked tortilla chips, just like the chili. If you have a lower calorie cornbread or something like that, it works really well with this. But like I said, the soup is surprisingly creamy, so you really don't need a lot. Some fresh herbs, and a little salsa matcha, works great. Next up, we have a spicy spin on veggie beef soup where the vegetables are the star, but we add some protein with a pound of extra lean ground beef. As you may be able to tell, my stash is empty, used all the ground beef in the freezer, so we're using that store-bought nonsense here. We just wanna add that to a Dutch oven with a little bit of olive oil and brown one side really nicely while we prep some diced celery and onion. Since we're only using a pound and not like two and a half pounds like we did in the chili, we can just push it to one side after we've browned one side nicely and then add our veggies to the other side. Give them a quick stir and then you can mix all this together and let this cook down. You want to fully cook the beef. The veggies will soften along the way and then you're ready to add all your remaining ingredients. All you need is a bit of kosher salt, black pepper, and granulated garlic or garlic powder. And then I mentioned the smashed chipotle peppers. That's actually what you're going to use here along with a bit of tomato paste. It's going to be sweet, smoky, spicy, and great. And then you're adding some chicken broth just to deglaze the pot. Just add a little bit, that way you can make sure you get everything, all the crispy bits and fond off the bottom of the pot before you add the remaining vegetables, which is a pound each of peeled russet potatoes and some more of the rainbow baby carrots that you saw in the chili. Then you'll add in all the chicken broth, a little bit of soy sauce and the W sauce, Worcestershire sauce a couple of bay leaves and some fresh thyme if you have it. I didn't have any on hand, so I went with dried thyme here. Just a pinch or two will work. Stir everything together and then bring this up to a simmer before you cover and cook for one to two hours. You wanna check on this at the one hour mark for sure. You're looking for your potatoes and carrots to be fork tender, but you definitely don't wanna simmer this too long as those potatoes will kind of turn to mash if you're stirring too much. Just be sure to take the bay leaves out before you serve. And definitely don't forget to add the frozen peas like I did. Be sure you get those in there. Let them come up to temperature for five to 10 minutes before you serve. And this soup goes really great with a grilled cheese, but if you're keeping it lighter, I like to just do some grilled sourdough in a grill pan, brush them with a little olive oil or avocado oil spray like I use and go to town. Last but not least, we have the easiest soup on the list and that's a chicken dumpling soup. I don't mean chicken and dumplings, Korean steamed chicken dumpling soup. If you've seen my high protein Costco finds video, this will be very familiar. It starts with a bit of oil. I use toasted sesame oil, but olive oil, chili oil, avocado oil, any oil works. Just need a little bit to fry off some aromatics. I'm using scallion white and reserve the greens for a garnish. And then using a bit more frozen minced garlic and ginger. Fresh works totally fine. And then we'll add in some gochujang, which is Korean chili paste. I'm making a double batch here, so two big bowls of soup and using a full four cup container of chicken bone broth. I believe I used two tablespoons of gochujang here. We just wanna add that to the pan. Just wanna fry all this off until it's fragrant, kinda of like you would with tomato paste, for instance. And then add our chicken broth. Add a little bit at a time so you can make sure you get everything off the bottom. You don't want anything stuck or burning. And then you can add it all in and just bring this up to a simmer. You're not looking to completely nuke this stuff. You just wanna bring it up to temperature 
And I like to add in some of this Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauce. You could totally just use soy sauce, black vinegar, tamari, something to add a little umami and a little kick to this. Once everything is together and warm through, you can add this to your dumplings. I'm using some frozen but microwaved chicken and vegetable dumplings. I believe these are Bibigo from Costco. You can find these all over the place. I'll just add those to a bowl and then pour the broth over it. Garnish with some scallions, a little bit of kimchi, chili crisp, fresh greens. You could, if you wanted to add some greens to your diet, add some spinach or chopped kale to your broth. And let that wilt down before you add this in. And then I'll sprinkle over a little gochugaru, Korean chili flakes, and go to town on this. And there you have it, four high protein soups and chili to keep you jacked all fall and winter long. I'll put every recipe down in the description with a link to print it if you want to. And if you have any questions about a recipe, leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to help you out.